Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video to give you some update on iFlight and the development of the last couple of weeks. There has been also some hardware changes as well as people are still waiting on the iFlight Commando 8. I want to tell you some inside info so you know what's going on and we're almost there but not yet. And the first topic today I want to talk to you about is the new hardware change with the BMI 270 gyro. You probably know that MPU 6000 gyros have been less and less available and more and more expensive. That's why we needed to switch to be able to still provide flight controllers as well as produce BNFs. I guess everybody can understand and that's why we did these changes. I want to show you our iFlight website first where you can see that the index number now is 1.1. The BMI 270 has a change lock number here. What's so special about the BMI 270 and why do I need to point it out? The gyro is currently not supported by stable 4.2.11 beta flight. That means you can either switch to 4.3, which is still a release candidate, but some people you might have been following it on Facebook noticed that there might be an issue, especially with Crossfire, uh, having fail saves or some bugs in the RX code. I'm not sure what's going on I, I don't know myself we wanted to provide a stable firmware even for a new gyro that uh, our customers can use and that's what we did with a custom fork and a custom branch I will share the link afterwards so you can see the branch here it's called 4.2.11 BMI it's public for everybody you can go on our Google Drive I will post a link in the video description as well and in that Google Drive, you have to search for iFlight BMI270 custom targets. There's two folders. I will explain that custom folder first. This is the beta flight configurator hex file for your Blitz F7 flight controller, which is including the BMI gyro. And uh, what we have to do is we have to install the old configurator, which is 10.7.2 for every beta flight 4.2.11 release and that's necessary because there's some bugs i just ran into one bug using the new configurator with the old firmware where i couldn't activate rpm filtering you will get this notice no problem close it and when you then try to flash one of these fcs i got over here just plug it in you will see when you show the lock over here that you got the board name over here. The old configurator won't find your target for your flight controller by itself. We have to do it by ourselves. So I would go there to the Blitz F7. If you have the mini, the smaller one, or the 30 by 30 flight controller, it's the same targets, it's the same schematics. Usually we would just select your target, the firmware, as I said, if you're not in export mode, you won't even be able to see the release candidates. So I select 4.2.11 and uh, I load it from online source now. And if I flash that target, I just show you in a second. In this case, as I told you before, as you see, the gyro is not available. And if I type in status in the CLI, you see gyros detected nothing. If I flash 4.3.0, it doesn't matter what RC I'm on, I would always recommend the latest. It would be available, but if you really wanna go ahead and um, use 4.2.11 because you wanna still use stable and you're scared of fail saving, then click on our hex file over here and just download the file. In my case, I just put it on my desktop so I would go to load firmware local, select my desktop, select the blitz, hex file, flash the firmware, do the same process over again. Flashing successful, I would click on connect. And this time I don't have to apply my custom defaults because that hack file already contained the flight controller specific data. And what I see here now is I can access the gyro and accelerometer. And when I go in my CLI again and type in status again, 
I can see I have the gyro and accelerometer available. So we fixed that. Um, we've uh, communicated that with the Betaflight Flight developers, of course. We've been testing that, of course. There have not been any issues. And that's why we are able to release that and give that out to our customers to use. There is a second option where I need to switch back to the second folder over here, which only contains a test version for the Beast F7 currently. There's always R4 in the index and uh, I just have to open the pull request. Chris Rosser submitted a pull request for the BMI gyro OS4 mode to reduce gyro low pass filters. And um, what's going on here and why I have to notice about that as well. The BMI gyro has to make it short, a higher internal low pass filter, which is about 800 Hertz where ICM gyros as well as the MPU 6000 have this low pass or cutoff at about 250 or 300 Hertz. So if you would export your gyro data, the pre-filtered data from your black box lock and analyze that on the black box explorer, you would see that there's so much more noise above 250 Hertz if you use the BMI270 gyro. It can be filtered with better flight if you set up a low pass filter at 250 hertz or 300 hertz. It would probably increase the delay by a bit, but there's even a better solution on its way. And that would be the implementation of the OSR4 oversampling mode for that BMI270 gyro which makes this, this gyro comparable to the MPU 6000 through those OSR4 oversampling that low pass or that cutoff that the MPU 6000 has internally. It's a hardware cutoff, a hardware software low pass filter. This cutoff would be there with the BMI gyro as well. There has been some testing done with Chris Rosser. I've been in touch with him already. I've used, I've initially used his code and his hex file. He helped me to export that to get some test data. I've also provided some test results we did and uh, we stacked two flight controllers on top of each other and one flash with the 4.3 default and one flash with the 4.3 plus OSR4 mode, the oversampling mode with the lower cutoff enabled. And what you can see is that we removed, if you compare here, the upper was running the normal mode and the lower, the red line is OSR4 active and the, the brown line, I would say, or dark red line is with OSR4 mode disabled. It's, it would be the standard mode or default mode. We're about to release those custom hex files as well. We are still testing. Betaflight is not able to put that in their current release. You have to understand that uh, it's 4.3 is currently in the release candidate phase. So it's very difficult to include new changes if there's already a release tryout going on. And that's why it won't be in 4.3. If testing is done and uh, successful, which I, which I think it will be, because there's no evidence of any problems currently, then it might probably go into 4.31 or 4.4. Uh, as I said before, we are in contact with Chris Rosser as well as the Betterflight developers, but that's not in our hand and not in our responsibility, but we think it's our responsibility to be able to provide files and software for our flight controllers that have been changed due to the market situation. And that's why there will be two sets of files, custom files available. So there's no difference and the MPU 6000 is not a better gyro. That's why we are doing this and explaining the situation so everybody can understand what's going on. Let's switch to the other topic I wanted to talk to you about and that's the iFlight Commando 8 Express LRS radio. The latest changes we had to do is our analog gimbals, which we tried to release with first, were too noisy 
So we switched over to some digital gimbals, which also better work with higher output. If you are flying the 900 megahertz on one watt, for example, uh, we are having a non-directional, we have an omnidirectional T antenna over here, which is basically transmitting backwards as well and having some effect on the gimbals, on analog gim gimbals especially. That's why I went ahead and uh, we didn't want to just get better analog gimbals, but switch to digital gimbals and could reduce jitter by a lot. ADC filter can be turned off and you won't even recognize the difference if it's turned on or off. ADC filter is supposed to be turned off with uh, HDX, especially with newer Betaflight releases as it's just interfering with the feed forward code. So that's has been fixed and my prototype will be here in a couple of days. So I, I can say that's the V1 prototype and I got the V2 prototype. Soon I will show you, I will then show some results so you know what you're about to get if you pre-ordered or if you're about to order. And the, the second big change was we were implementing a speaker because some people, especially me as well, I was not frustrated, but I'm always happy to have some voltage. Yelled at me and uh, LQ and that's why we decided to integrate a speaker to the circuit. That's the second change. And the third change was HTX. We initially wanted to release the radio with OpenTX and then go over, move over to HTX. But we now had the time to fix the gimbals and also make sure that HTX is on the radio for its release. We've been in contact with OpenTX and HTX. We are now fixing the last bugs that we can find. But uh, I think the release will either be with OpenTX and then you get the file for HTX or it will be with HTX already. So you can decide what you want to use, but it's a Express LRS radio. So I would recommend everybody to use the latest version of HTX because I know those two teams are developing together and they're putting some features in that can be used with Express LRS as well. That's it for today, guys. If you're still watching, thanks for watching and uh, leave a like or subscribe and I uh, see you next time.